All right. Um, that was that was very sad on our part. Um, I don't even know what to say, honestly. That was such a bad. I haven't seen us like. Obviously, we're we are on a five game skid, and we were playing bad, but we were kind of playing bad, but we were still competing with those teams, and we just lost by thirty. What was the final score? Let me look it up real quick. This is this is the most Charlotte Hornet thing to do in the history of the Charlotte Hornets of the Charlotte Bobcats to lose in this fashion after the season we had it was 144 to 117 the final score uh, if i just want to go through the players who did good 23 points for bridges um which is pretty pretty insane uh coming back from covid uh cody zeller uh, with his playoff experience had a, had a relatively good game 17 points pacers i reference this in my preview i reference i reference this in my preview Dougie, McDermott, McBuckets, uh, that was a huge, uh, that was a bad matchup for, for P.J. Washington. I predicted that. Um, I predicted uh, Sabonis would go off. He kind of did, kind of didn't, only 14 points, but his his presence was obviously there. 21 rebounds for Sabonis. Um, they just had very good performances all around the board. The the key, Keelan Martin guy, I didn't even reference him in that preview video because I didn't even know he existed. Um, I did reference the the Ashe Brissett dude. Did not did not know he was that good and he would be their leading scorer in a play in scenario. It's it's insane. Um, and I'm probably gonna title this video "The Charlotte Hornets Gave Me Blue Balls" or some shit like that because that is how I'm feeling right now. And I know I I've referenced this in a couple of my videos uh, throughout the year of. I don't know why I'm giving myself hope as a Charlotte Hornets fan because it always ends up bad. Whenever I get hopeful and whenever I am uh, undoubtful about what my Charlotte Hornets are doing, whenever I'm like, okay, we're actually li like a capable team. We can actually uh, make a run for the playoffs. We can do all these things. I just get heartbroken. I just get heartbroken. Um, we were the four seed before All-Star break. I was super high on us. I was like, okay, we're going to have home court advantage. No, no. We have uh, LaMelo get injured. We have Monk get injured. Obviously, Gordon Hayward's injured. We have all these injuries. Devontae Graham is injured. Uh, one, uh, both of the Martin twins periodically got injured. Our second half of the season, we dropped from the four seed, which we once were, and we looked like a bright team, which we still look like a bright team. I'm not going to not gonna say we don't, but we turned it into a 10 seed at the end of the year. But before I get even get into the 10 seed, we were the 8 seed and I was feeling hopeful and I made all these videos talking about how as an 8 seed we play either at, at the time that I was that I recorded the video, we we either played the Heat or the Celtics. And at that point I think I I said the Celtics and I was like, "Okay, we can maybe win the game against the Celtics." And then we go on that five-game skid. And then we drop down to the 10 seed. And I make the video uh, yesterday, and I'm like, okay, we're the 10 seed. Uh, we got most of our guys coming back except Gorn Hayward. I, I did see what Stephen A. Smith said about Gorn Hayward. I, I might make a video about that. I'm not sure. There's a lot of videos that are going to be coming about the offseason, about um, further into the playoffs about our young guys, about our old guys who might not come back. There's going to be a lot of lot of videos coming soon, so subscribe to the channel if you guys are not already. But in yesterday's video, I was like, okay, there's some bad matchups here, but Karis LeVert was out. Um, TJ Warren was out. Um, there was a load of their rotational guys that were not playing, and I was like, okay, some of our matchups, it, like, like Karis LeVert is probably their second best player. And he was out with health and health and safety protocols. So I was like, okay, the the fan duel, the, the all the betting odds were in our favor then. And I was like, okay, we have to win this game, right? We lose by that much. We lose by that much. And it's just the most Charlotte Hornet thing to do to get my hopes up, to get all our fans' hopes up that we are even in the playing tournament and we just lose by thirty. Um, there has to be change. I don't know what the change is going to be. And I don't want to come off too negative 
because at the start of the season, we weren't projected to be this good anyway, so maybe I should be grateful. But sometimes when when teams are like doing so good, like we weren't doing so good throughout the year, but we were doing better than expected throughout the year, I expect us to be better. I do. Even after all these years of us doing really bad and us not making the playoffs, I expected us to be better, and we just weren't. So there has to be some change with coaching. There has to be some change in the front office. And I don't want to get a, get us into this because uh, I've seen some Hornets fans on Twitter and they were like, you guys should be grateful that we are we are even in this position, which you should be. But I still want change. Like, I don't think we should be complacent about being a 10 seed and then losing by 30. Obviously, we get better draft odds, but I don't think that's why you play the game I, to get better draft odds. I think you play the game to win. And I think there has to be, I mean, Coach JB, I love him throughout the year, but there was points throughout the year where I was like, is he really our coach for the future? And then there was other points where I was like, okay, like uh, he, he got shit on and he doesn't really care about like fans. Um, he, I, I remember this moment vividly where he didn't start LaMelo for the first, how many, so like two weeks, three weeks of the season. All the fans were not behind him. They were like, you just selected this guy third overall. You should play him. And he was like, no, I'm going to let him uh, develop, off the vent, uh, develop off the bench, playing off all their players. And I really respected that decision from Coach JB. But then you see some of the lineups, and it's like, okay, Bismack Biambo should not be playing the amount of minutes he is in certain games throughout the year. And I, I'm just divided on how I feel about him as a coach. And I don't know if he's the problem. I don't think... I, I don't know if it's our experience. I don't know if it's our front office. Because Mitch Kupchak, I don't I don't know about him either. He had some good draft picks uh, for the Lakers before he went to the Hornets, drafting, you know, Brandon Ingram um, and all those pieces uh, for the Lakers. And then he transitioned into the, the Hornets gig. And he, he signed some good players. But there has to be something wrong for us to end up in the position we're in right now. And I think my fear is this off season is we're going to be really complacent. We're going to be we're going to be saying like okay, we have young guys, we we were better than average last year. Let's run it back and see how we do. I don't want us to be like that. I want us to make a move. I want us to not re-sign someone that only makes us this much better and and sign someone from another team that makes us this much better. I don't think that's asking too much. And I think uh, I said this probably like the first game I reacted to this season and I am going to make a montage of all the funny moments of all the the shocking moments throughout the year all the disappointing moments because there's been a lot of them um throughout the year um in the in the coming weeks i have to edit it i didn't start editing it because i was like okay we should beat the pacers without like half their team injured right no so i got to start editing that but regardless um it, i don't know I don't want to blame this. I don't want to. I, I feel like I'm, I've been talking for what, 18 minutes? I don't want to pin this on just, oh, our guys are inexperienced. Because what, what did Terry Rozier have in the first half? Eight points. Um, Cody Zeller was our highest leading scorer, I think. I just expect us to be better. And I don't think, like, we played bad in every single, like, if you go back to every single nationally televised game. We have played bad, and I think except one where we won like one game out of all the the nationally televised games. I don't think we're scared of the moment because Lamelo Ball has always been in the moment. Miles Bridges has highlight dunks left and right, so he's always always getting media attention. I don't know if it's just that we're scared of playing in big games. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know what it is. If you guys want to comment down below what you think we should do in the off season, or what videos I should make next about the Hornets or uh, talking about other teams as uh, my Hornets season is over abruptly. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. If you like these videos, subscribe, like, all that jazz, and I'll see you guys later.